I've put some silly words in my bio on social media. And not the pronouns, those are just there to trigger Jordan Peterson. I mean the word discontent creator. And that begs the question, you know, what is discontent? I think that illustrates the point well enough. But I guess whoop, there's a little fly. Yeah. I guess uh, I, I have to sort of start with uh, trying to figure out what is content before I, I go into what is discontent. And I, I, I always... The videos you've seen from me are 99.9% .9 of the time are all scripted. I write them very tightly. They're edited. I put on my public persona uh, and I portray a version of myself that I want the world to see and that I think is going to make good content but again because you know my mind isn't good for content yeah. uh, my mind constantly works too quickly for my mouth so whenever I'm trying to say something I get distracted by my mind trying to formulate the next argument down the road and, and you know I, i'm uh, i'm terribly poor content in unedited yeah. ways uh, you, you get what i'm meaning what i'm saying hopefully so, yeah, what is content? Content is what you put on the internet. Uh, and this. the reason why this is called content it is, is because it is the content to get traffic to make money for the advertisers. So, so the reason why we use the word content for whatever is on the internet is that it's the content there to lure in people to watch advertising. Uh, and uh, this is, I'm not saying this is a, uh, uh, you know, this is a business model. I completely understand that. Uh, uh, but it, But it's not the only business model that could have been uh, created for the internet. It just is the one that happened to become dominant. A and in some sense, this was uh, more tolerable when the internet largely consisted of these uh, content creation sites now, the news outlets and magazines and, uh, you know, collegehumor.com or whatever. But with the advent of social media, we've become the content. And that has a whole lot of negative 
effects for how we present ourselves as people and how we present our art, how we present our arguments, how we present ourselves as human beings. Now, one thing it does it, is that it, it, it gives incentives towards predictability. And um, you know, that's why you write things in your bio on social media is if you're a content creator, you need some words in your bio to make it easy to pr predict what kind of content you will make. And this is why you see all the TikTok videos and the YouTube shorts and reels and all that stuff where a lot of people have figured out that if they open their videos the same way every time and they speak about the same topics every time, that is a great way to get reliability for the advertisers. And, yeah, to get paid. And sort of, there's a few content creators who have a few different boxes that they create content in. So, so for instance, you know, I, I, I'm a bipolar artist and I talk about mythology and sometimes politics, and sometimes mental health, and some. T but e e each of these boxes can be good content, but they also they, they limit the way you speak about things, A and the more different boxes you have, the less reliable you become for the advertisers. So, again, this whole structure incentivizes you to, to put yourself in a box, to find your niche. And I, I, I've been struggling with this as long as I've made content. I, I've, um, I don't want to do just one thing. I mean, there, there are things that were important me, for me to, to, to have, like, you know, talking about free use, because I, I want to advocate free use and copyright reform. Uh, you know, the monsters, because I like drawing monsters, then the music, because I like drawing music. And, you know, bipolar was really important for me to have. Because by talking about my experience as someone struggling with bipolar disorder, because I have very few limits on, on I overshare. I am a constant oversharer, so, so I could use my oversharing for good by talking about my bipolar. Then what happens when I start realizing that, oh, bi bipolar doesn't really 
explain my life as well as I thought it did. And that, you know, I, I still think that I, I'm very probably bipolar, but underlying that bipolar, I've, through a lot of research and through a lot of self evaluation testing and months of agonizing, I've come to realize that a better label or box to put my life experience in is probably self diagnosed, as to this point, as autistic and ADHD or ODHD as. It's called. So, and this just struck me in um, in just a glimmer of a thought, just a little flash of, ooh, if I suddenly come out as autistic. Am I betraying my bipolar bipolar fans? <laughs> That's an awful way to put it. I I, I didn't th take the thought seriously or anything because I want to be me. I I, I want to do the shit that I want to do. But the idea that it the thought even struck me for a. Um, flash of a second that shows the toxicity of thinking of yourself as content and what also This is hard to talk about because it's fresh in my mind. It is something I'm living through at the moment. And the realization that long before I developed the bipolar symptoms and the bipolar disorder, I had a very autistic ADHD experience of life. I, I, I don't mean to put too much into these labels. I think that in a hundred years, maybe we will look back at our time and say, why did they put all the silly names on how people were damaged by society? Because that, that's what we're talking about. We, we're talking about compatibility with society and how being incompatible with this very rigid hierarchical shitfest we've built damages people and we're putting all of that in little boxes of well, bipolar content and the autist content the ADHD content and the neurotypical content for all the normals the norm I, I've never met a single normal person in my life we're all f freaks where was I yeah Content. Realizing that I am autistic. I feel so weird to say, but realizing that I am autistic also made me realize why I have such a problem sticking to my lane why I have such a problem 
choosing just one topic, one form of content to present to the world. And that is because for me, in my experience of the world, everything I talk about, everything I draw, everything I do with a passion is all a part of what in autist language is called my special interest. It is all part of the same content for me. A and for me, I have, I've just gotten from my father these boxes upon boxes and piles upon piles of, of all the art I produced from when I was one year old. I started drawing when I was one and I started talking when I was three. So that should have been a, you know, sort of a hint <laughs> might be autistic. But I've just gotten these piles and piles of my old art uh, and you know, looking through that art made me realize how drawing was it wasn't just a special interest it was a it was stim it stimulated me it was how i could get out my feelings how i could self regulate myself and also how i could understand the world because from the very start as soon as you start recognizing um figurative shapes in my art which happen between the you know, between one and three it starts getting figurative so to speak but i'm telling stories from the very start my special interest was putting things into systems down into paper onto the paper in order to understand it to understand the world around me and i guess that that sort of explains why whether I'm posting a political video or I'm making a joke or I'm just posting art with music to it or I'm um, talking about archaeology or mythology or comics or uh, video games or uh, wrestling or you know, any, you know, any of the myriad of things that I'm passionately interested in, it's all a part of the same thing. It is all a part of, in lack of a better term, of visual storytelling. So for me, you know, when commenters say, oh yeah, I came here. I mean, people have said, I came here for the politics, but yeah, it's okay when you do art. And then most people say, oh, I came here for the art, but it, could you please stop doing the politics? But for me, I can't stop, because um, for me, they are the same things. And I guess that's what discontent means for me. Um, it means finding ways to make art, make stories out of all the different things that I'm interested in, that sparks the fire within me, that, that ignites my passion without worrying about what the fuck advertisers will think. Which, of course, means that I, I, I need to have other ways to earn money on this. So, so 
I need to get better at advertising for myself. And, you know, probably that's a lot more of the shorts you will see on my uh, TikTok and my YouTube and all reels, all that stuff. A lot more of them will probably be more advertising. So, so I'll be self-advertising or you know, advertising for things I think is cool. Yeah. And that's you know that's what a short or a TikTok mm. sorry is in uh, some way it, it is uh, advertising whether an advert whether you know it or not but, but I, I will probably be be experimenting less with the short format and hopefully more with the long format and also i will be consciously making more bad content making more stuff that's not ready for prime time making more stuff that's just from my heart from my heart uh not not necessarily like this because this was a very strange and uh, a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit comfortable video to do to to expose my mind in all its confused glory is um, is scary. But yeah, I, I, I'm what this video is is a reminder to myself to make more discontent to make more unapologetically what i want to make and yes i will have to do this within the fucked up uh, algorithms and platform censorship and uh, advertiser-friendly guidelines, community guideline violations, and all that crap. I, I, I this is you know, I, I for a mind such as mine, a mind such as mine, there's not a lot of ways to make money, uh, to survive, uh, and I'm really blessed to have the ability to make art and also to talk crap and have people listen sometimes. And I, this video is a reminder to do a better job at doing this unapologetically as myself. I think that I think that's the <laughs> discontent video. Um to be smart, um we have a special edition Gaysilla print that's on sale only until the sixth of October twenty twenty four. And I need to, you know to pay the bills, I need to mention these types of things. Uh, but yeah, what I'm saying is expect less predictability from my stuff. And I hope you enjoy it. And if you came to my channel for just one thing, either, you know, Follow a little while and see if you like the other stuff or find some other content. Because I, 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 I'll... I'll be making this content. Fuck.